Hello everybody, Chad here, Griffin Pipes, coming at you on this Sunday morning, Father's Day. Probably be a long video today, I've got a lot to show, talk about. Uh, first off, smoking a little pipe I made for when I went to the uh, Mule Town show. And in it, I'm smoking some dark far cherry from Kim Byron. Well, it's been a couple weeks since I did a video. And uh, lots went on that amount of time. My grandbaby was born. He's doing good. Uh... We, uh, we didn't do a whole lot last weekend, stayed around the house. But a couple of weeks ago, when I ain't showed them yet, I got a bunch of tins, tobacco tins, while we was out uh, antique hunting. First off, got some George Washington pipe tobacco. Wanted that tin. But they was asking like thirty dollars for it or something. It's at an antique mall, and I got up front and was talking to the guy. I had all these others, and I said I'd really like to have that one, but it's just too expensive. He said, well, let me see if I can do anything for you on that. He come back and he said, how's $20? I said, yeah, I'll take it. It's, a, it's perfect. And it's first, well, I've seen one more, so I've seen two of them. And that is the better of the ones I've seen. And the other one was, I think that's wanting $35 for it. <coughs> Next big one I've got is Union Leader Plug. It's pretty neat. It's a big box. I uh, got a hinge on it, top open stuff. It'd be good for storing stuff. Uh, then I found a little Flying Dutchman. I don't know if you can see it too good. And a older Sir Walter Raleigh. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, the ones with the cap over 10 tops are the older. The others had a top that kind of sat down in, and this, I think that's a little lighter than those. Then a Bond Street. I've never, first one I've ever seen of those. And a velvet. And this weekend, I found an old Prince Albert, real nice shape. Got it for like seven dollars. Usually I see them they're about ten dollars, especially in that good a shape. And plus it's got the the cap over top. But some of the real good stuff that I found <clears throat> was some antique tobacco this weekend. It's I think it's kind of hard to see it. There we go. The sun's coming in the window. It's red cap. And it's full of tobacco. R.C. Owen Company, Gallatin, Tennessee. So that's not far from me. Then I found... Two packs of Durham 
and uh, I think it's Bull Durham is what it is. It's got a big bull on it. It says Genuine Durham Smoking Tobacco. And it come with rolling papers to make cigarettes. I found two of those in the little bags. And I don't know if the bags will be any count or not if they're completely dried out so bad that they ever be able to do anything with them. But... <clears throat> May try to smoke one, put one up. Then I found a Wally Frank limited mixture number 33. And it's a little plug. What it feels like. <coughs> then the two ones I'm really tickled with, and I'm probably smoke these, try to rehydrate them, is Kentucky Club. And they've never been open. They've got a cellophane and <coughs> the country doctor. I found all of them yesterday at the uh, one of the little antique malls we go to. He had a pack of uh, old red man that had never been opened. <coughs> uh, there's some old cigarettes in there that had never been opened. But I wanted those tobaccos, the pipe tobacco slash cigarette tobaccos we uh this weekend's my wife's and mine 25th anniversary so uh, that it was friday so we took off friday i found a little airbnb about an hour something away little cabin it said glamping eco glamping and <clears throat> we got over Friday evening pull up to this metal gate just a farm gate with a closer on it Typed in a code, went in, started going down this rough looking country. Well, it ain't even country road, it's just like a what we call log roads around here where they've logged the mountains. It said stop at the first uh, uh, check in cabin on the right when you come in. We pulled in there, and it's just a little old, like a tool shed. <clears throat> Not like an Amish-built tool shed, just like a rough-built tool shed. Like an old smokehouse, if you know what I mean. Nobody was in there, but eventually a guy come down over the hill well of a camper trailer. <clears throat> he comes down, asked if it said, hey, you Chad? I said, yeah. He said, okay, follow me, and he said, I'll take you to your cabin. We follow him down over the hill. It's rough roads going down in there. And uh, it ain't much more than, just like I said, log roads, four-wheeler trail. <coughs> My wife's looking at me, and trees are cause scraping down the sides of her vehicle. And uh, we pull up this cabin, little old tiny, I don't know, probably 15 by 15. I 
I knowed that there's a share bunkhouse or share house outside of the cabin and a bathroom outside the cabin. <clears throat> but I didn't know that it was going to be about 300 yards up the hill. <laughs> rough walking no path it's just a little old path up through there and i knew that the cabin didn't have air conditioning but it's supposed to be down on the creek so i thought we could open the windows up in the cabin cool air to creep and everything, it'd be all right. We walk in this cabin and open the two back doors. There's a few windows on the side, but they don't open. They were just like, this cabin was built out of reclaimed lumber and materials. The windows was just panes that had come out of sliding windows, <clears throat> but they were permanent. The only way you could get any air in is open the two back doors and leave them open. And uh, so we was going to have to sleep with the doors open to this cabin. And the bad thing is, I don't know if you're like me, but I have to use the bathroom two or three times a night. I didn't want to walk halfway up the hill. And uh, he said he had surveillance cameras on the outsides of the cabin, so I didn't want to go outside the cabin to use the bathroom. And my wife has to use the bathroom at night. I'd had to walk her to the up there. But it's just, uh, this cabin's like three miles from Crossville in town. So it's not far out of town, <clears throat> but uh, it there's supposed to be a swimming hole that you could easily walk down to. Shoot, we started walking. It's a quarter mile down to this little old rough, rough road. It's four-wheeler trails or old mule trails. get down there and it's just rough snaky looking and the place wasn't maintained it's just like he had throwed these stuff up and just didn't maintain it uh, the roads wasn't maintained and i'm not picky by no means not fancy uh, <clears throat> i've lived rough all my life you know but this was pretty rough me and my wife's had we've lived you know, rough places and stuff, but no, that's pretty rough. But back to the cabin, you're supposed to be able to be right on the creek. Well, shoot, the creek was 300 yards down over the woods, down over the hill, and the trees growed up. You couldn't even see the creek. I was expecting to be able to walk out the back and down to the creek. <coughs> Excuse me, but <clears throat> they wasn't. It was a big drop off. Went down. They was good with their pictures, cause you couldn't tell all that stuff from the pictures. But there's a good Mexican restaurant that we usually eat at in Crossville. So I told her, I said, let's run in town, get something to eat, let it cool off a little bit, and everything. And, <laughs> We headed into town and going back out, it's just rough. So, uh, we get part way into town. I told her, I said, I don't think we're going back. I said, I don't I don't care about staying down there in the heat. And it was 90 degrees Friday. This little cabin didn't have 
insulation, nothing. It just uh, it basically a little tool shed that we're staying in. And uh, granted, it wasn't real expensive to rent, but it was for what it was. Everybody called it glamping. <clears throat> to me, glamping is like staying in a camper trailer and camping. This wasn't even that good. This was like camping and sharing a bunkhouse and, and all the cooking facility, everybody shared. The coffee pot, everybody shared. Bathrooms, everybody shared. They didn't even have the bathrooms labeled that as bathrooms. You just had to go run opening doors. He found bathrooms. But uh, <clears throat> we decided not to go back. So uh, we went on into town, ate supper, went to Rule King, did a little shopping. We was wanting to get out and do some antiquing <coughs> Saturday, yesterday. So I told her, I said, well, let's find us a motel room. We'll stay over here. She just wanted to come on back home. I said, no, let's. So we pull into a Holiday Inn. I asked the little girl, I said, uh, you got any rooms? She said, yeah. She said, they're 200 plus, 200 plus for a night. I said, really? She said, yeah. She said, well, I just called for somebody over at the, uh, uh, was it Baymont? I think Baymont, or no, Comfort Inn. But anyways, <clears throat> she said they had a single for 176 And she said the farther you get towards Cookful, the more expensive it'll probably be, which I didn't pay that no attention. So we started headed back home <clears throat> at that point. and uh, pulled into the Baymont Inn. I said, well, let's check this place. Well, I got on there <clears throat> and looked and the reviews was like a 3.1. I'm like, no, this ain't happening. So there's a red roof in right next to it. And I thought, <clears throat> let's try it, see what it is. <clears throat> Excuse me, looked on the internet, same thing, bad reviews. But right across the road was a Comfort Inn. And uh, we, uh, I told my wife, I said, I'm gonna stop here, check this place, and if it ain't, we'll go on home. It's done nine o'clock Friday night. Well, there's a bunch of people checking in. And I finally got up to the counter and asked that girl, I said, you got any rooms? And she said, yeah. And she asked me information. I said, well, wait a minute. I said, how much is it a night? She said, tax, everything, $139. I said, okay, that sounds good. They had a swimming pool and a free breakfast and whatnot. So we got to her room, everything stayed. It wasn't no super fancy motel, but it's a whole lot better than the tool shed was getting ready to stay in, and it's almost like being at deliverance at the other place. But what gets me is every that guy's reviews is five stars, and it uh, he was in the top five homes of Airbnb. And like I said, these are sheds, the little tool sheds, uninsulated, un <clears throat> unfinished. You had a bed, a little old bitty fan about that big around, and a refrigerator. <clears throat> he said, oh, well, I've got you some waters in the refrigerator. 
Well, I went over and opened the refrigerator and put this two little old bottles of water. And, but like I said, if you wanted to fix coffee or anything, you had to go up on the hill <coughs> and as a community. The only private spot you had was your little back porch or your little bitty bedroom. Yeah, but it just wasn't for us. So I left him a review. It wasn't mean or nothing, but I just put on her that, you know, hey, this is the things that I've seen, you know. And if you're looking for this, fine, but if you're looking for more than this, this ain't the place to go like me, and that would have saved me some money if I'd seen that. And it said, be honest. So I was honest on what I thought. But, uh, you know, and I didn't want to hurt the guy's business because it's his living, but, and people just absolutely love it. But most people's coming from big cities and they're looking to camp out, but uh, there's a, I know of a lot more places that's better than that than for the money to stay but no, we didn't go <laughs> Pickett State Park and they've got Car uh, Chariot Creek Lodge that you can camp down there and it's old log cabins <clears throat> it's like being at 4-H camp and it's got a community bathhouse and everything but you know that going into it the, but it's, you just walk outside the door and then they've got a, you get your food and everything with it cheaper than this. And they've got a cafeteria that the, all the workers eat at and you can eat at, and, but it's home cooked. It's, it's pretty neat down there. And, but you know that going into it, this one, you really didn't know it. It wasn't an anniversary type deal. <laughs> it was to get out of town to go camping. If I'm going camping like that, I'm staying in a tent. It would have been more comfortable to me. I, oh yeah, I picked up two clocks at the, there's a guy going out of business and I'll put the video here in a minute at, it, at the end here. And uh, the clocks that I picked up is pretty neat, and that's 50% off. We did a lot of just shopping. We went to Bucky's and hit uh, four or five different antique stores yesterday, and <clears throat> come back home, and then got my daughter that, and my two grandsons, and went with them to. Uh, Pioneer Festival in Livingston. Her husband is a police officer and he was working security down there. So we all went down there and spent the evening till dark last night. It was nice. <clears throat> Good and cool down there, believe it or not, on the concrete and blacktop. Well, everybody, it's getting pretty long, uh, but before I go, I want to let you know I'm right at 500 subscribers. As soon as I hit 500, I like to think I like five now. Uh, I'm going to have a giveaway. <clears throat> and it's took forever to get the last 20. I don't know. Uh, but uh, get the word out, whatever. As soon as we <clears throat> hit 500, I'll have a giveaway. And, uh, but, uh, I know it's long in the video mentioning that, but, uh, and there'll be a lot of people that won't stay as far in the video to get it, but that'll be the true people. And when I do my giveaway, it'll be the, I'll let everybody know at the end of the, or somewhere in the video <clears throat> that, uh, I'm doing a giveaway, but, uh, just keep your eye out for that.
just about went through a whole lighter full of fluid keeping this stuff lit today. Didn't let it dry out before it started. But Hopefully this week, my shop, I'm gonna have my epoxy floor done. I'm doing bright white epoxy in here. I'll post some pictures of it when we get it done. Then I'm gonna start moving my machines in and doing my wiring and getting my walls up. Then you won't have to look at old rough wood and stuff. Well, that's all I've got for this week. Uh, thanks for staying along this far. If you've stayed this long, and <clears throat> if you do, please like and uh, hit a thumbs up there. And uh, like I said, we'll try to have a giveaway here pretty soon. Well, till the next time, remember, we're all brothers of leaf and uh, try to bless somebody. I've been truly blessed this week myself.